April Fools, bitch. I was planning on doing this shit all along. What up, y'all? Rap Critic here. And so apparently I got to review some TikTok song from 10 years ago that recently got popular. And, you know, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of this shit. Like, no, there's nothing wrong with stuff getting popular on social media, but every time it's so clear that no one's actually listening to these as full songs. They're just lame 30-second gimmick novelty records that are barely worth their salt beyond the meme. And most of the time, they're not even that fucking funny. Like, what? what's the gimmick for this one? Oh my god! I can't believe this! Yeah, I'm, I'm having a little trouble too. Okay, wh wh where did this guy come from? Who is this guy? I mean, uh, the yell, the hokey stock sound effect turned into a beat. And why does that one synth line sound so goddamn weird and spiky? It's like an evil killer whale singing its own villain music. For real, who is this goofball? And why does he look so familiar? Hey, what? Did anyone else just hear that music cue? Oh no, what's happening with the footage? No, please, not a YouTube skit interrupting the fucking review. God damn it, I hate this fucking theater kid bullshit. <laughs> well, what is this phone call? Some alternate version of me and I'm getting back to the future? <laughs> Excuse me. That's right, asshole. You're officially getting better than what we call getting back to the future than the future. Okay, so uh, this is your future self, and uh, yes, I sound like a knockoff blend of two voices that you like doing, but, uh, but never mind that. See, because uh, I ripped a hole in fabric in space and time, rap critic, uh, to make this multiverse phone that can access different versions of you uh, for nebulous reasons that I'll reveal later. Uh, but till then, this is a phone that can access the younger version of you that made this song in an alternate. Okay, that's nice. Well, well, let's get back to the review. I'm not here for this low concept YouTube lore shit. Ooh, because it's an alternate universe version of me, I'm supposed to react differently to it or something. I don't give a shit. But for real, to be honest, I'm down to give the song a chance. And I can tell there's some indie production going on with this joint. So I don't want to be too harsh. But man, it just so much needs to be worked on from a music perspective. Like, OK, fine. Just give it some praise. Maybe it's a little catchy. The sample you could say is used kind of clever. But whatever, nigga. What I'm focused on is how try hard he's being with these bars. Once again, this crap keeps happening. Feeling like I took four shots to the abdomen. Like, it's one of those things where you can tell they're going out of their way to open over lyricalize things by phrasing it in a way people don't normally do so it comes out kind of awkward. Like, no one really says crap in that context unless they're trying to make music their mom could also listen to, but you can tell he also did it to just have that little mini internal rhyme with that first syllable of happening, you know what I mean? And feeling like I took four shots to the abdomen, like why four? You can tell he's like throwing more words in there to fill out the flow, you know what I mean? So here I am again, screaming like a whiny brat, cause I had the nerve to think someone could like me back. But okay, here we get to the meat of what the song is about, unrequited love. Specifically the type where this guy's been pining after different girls for years without anyone ever liking them back. With each new endeavor, I think this is where the change starts, and this time will be an exception to my track record. And I get all that, but man, the awkward wording just keeps taking me out of it. But maybe I should have hired a fact checker to tell me, hey, 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 need I remind you, you thought the same thing every other time too. And when I go through this, the pain within me rages to the point where all I can say is, when I go through this, the pain within me rages, like, oh, yeah, could you have worded that a little more melodramatically? I don't think people got the emotional angle you were going for just yet. Yeah, my main problem is just the wordiness of it. You can tell certain rhymes are there just for the sake of forcing a multisyllabic flow instead of trying to make it sound organic. And when love rolls over me like a vicious tank, I feel this like the victim of a malicious prank. Like, is the tank really vicious? Is that a word people use to describe tanks? Like, no, he put that in there to rhyme it with malicious in the next line. And again, I get being frustrated with not finding love, but wow, does it veer into some strange territory. It's the same old music. See, what you did was confuse a nice guy for a eunuch. Oh, okay. I, I think I might actually need to call this guy. Why do you give the best of yourself to the worst of us? Is a god being a complete joker plus? All right, let, let, me, let me give him a ring real quick. Because once we're spouting the women only like assholes talking point, we're usually on a pretty distinct pathway here. Oh, hey, is this the guy who sent me that future phone thing? Uh, well, yes and no, but we don't have time for that. Point being, I wanted to pull your ear about that new Oh My God joint you just made. Oh, cool. 
cool. Uh, wait, does it get like really popular in the future or something? Uh, something like that. But for my show in particular, I wanted to start off by asking, well, first of all, what the fuck is up with this production, man? It sounds like carnival music written by a coke addict. Yeah, I, I know it's kind of weird. Kinda? But, you know, I was purposely trying to go for that, you know, melodramatic, over-the-top sound. I mean, yeah, I have to admit, the mix is a bit muddy, and while I certainly was working with some ideas I thought I could capture the sound that I was going for, I was ultimately more focused on the lyrics than the musicality, and, you know, maybe that caused certain elements of it to not really come through the way I wanted. I took it to a producer. Oh, good. Okay. Well, a film student audio guy, anyway. Wait, you... You took your weird-sounding experimental rap song to a film student to mix? Yeah, I know. It's not his expertise. I threw him a curveball of a mixing job there because, you know, the instruments that I use are kind of low, and my voice is typically kind of low, despite the pubescent wine I'm currently putting on. You know, I have a contrast to your voice in this video, but clearly as a reference to a popular sci-fi character, but, you know, hopefully a little less grating so I can maintain it for a whole episode, but also so people will want to keep listening. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be meta by commenting on the thing. But back to my point, uh, the track's got other strong, low instruments crashing against my low vocals, you know, uh, coming to him with an unbalanced, jumbled mix, it just gave the guy a conundrum to untangle, and I don't know, I think the guy did the best job he could. <laughs> He's got an excuse for everything, don't he, folks? Hey! Well, then, moving on, I wanted to ask, specifically, uh, what inspired you to write this song? Whoa, did someone just ask a music student about their art project? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so check this out, right? So the album it's from is called Rapper's Liebe, right? Which means rapper's love in German, because I based it off of something called Dichterliebe, which means a poet's love uh, by this romantic age composer named Schubert. See, what was cool to me was that Dish to Leave was what they called back then a song cycle, which essentially just meant a collection of poems set to music around a particular story or idea. It's basically today what we call a concept album. It's something where every track relates back to a connected theme. And well, Dish to Leave was from the romantic era, so uh, of course it's about this melodramatic guy who falls in love with a woman who's already engaged to be married, so he frustrates himself into a rage, and by the end he metaphorically throws his love for her into a deep nearby river, but like, it may have also been, you know, literally throwing himself into a river. The point is, it's some sad boy hour shit. And I got inspired to modernize it after diving into the poetry and really comprehending how it wasn't just pretty words, but trying to relate a human story of experiencing unrequited love and how the heartache... Yeah, alright, let's cut the history lesson. Well, let's talk about the nice guy shit in the verses. What's up with that? Talk about that. See, what you did was confuse a nice guy for a eunuch. Oh yeah, definitely. I worded it that way for a reason. I wanted the character in the song using specific phrases to cue you into that kind of person. But despite the over-the-topness, I also wanted to try to give a genuine account of that emotional experience for how guys fall down those rabbit holes. Okay, but you definitely sound a little convincing, if you know what I mean. Okay, look, I'll be honest, man, I'm not even 21 yet, you know, I'm definitely awkward about talking to girls about how I feel about them, because, well, I mean, can, can we just break the fourth wall here and just say, isn't it hard in general to tell someone how you feel about them? Like, as much as we want to dump on guys who become misogynistic, they don't just start that way, right? Don't they start just like everyone else, where we're all young and inexperienced on how to talk to the person you're attracted to, so, you know, you just try to talk to people that you like and be yourself, but when it never leads to a relationship with anyone you're interested in, well, don't just start to, of course, feel like you're not attractive. I mean, you know, because you don't have any evidence to believe the opposite, right? So so you feel insecure about it, and you kind of hope there was something you could do or say to get the person that you like interested in you when you don't know if they'll like you back. So uh, with this album, I wanted to have it set up that he specifically isn't the type of guy who reads game books or, or acts fake to attract the type of person that he thinks somebody wants, uh, but it just hasn't happened for him yet. He's a normal guy, but he's never been in love. Okay, but when we get to that third verse, it gets a little, you know. And you should know that it's difficult to change a man whose attraction to you is only physical and it's pitiful. To get something special to someone worthless. Why do I meet so many girls who make this the purpose? I mean, that's a pretty charged language saying that so many girls like guys that are bad for them, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. But, you know, I, I brought it to that point so I could do the realization flip he has near the end. When will you see that this path will always lead to rejection? But I guess I could ask myself the same question. I mean, we're both on a similar mission. Chasing after something that will never come to fruition. Okay but you still wrote it like a college kid trying to flesh out their word count for an essay. That may be so. I mean, I currently am a college kid, but uh, the point I wanted to get to was, you know, when guys like this get rejected, uh, they do often notice that the girls they like will sometimes end up with guys who sometimes aren't great for them. And that's what prompts these types of guys to feel like, well, well but I'm so much better if she could just see. So uh, I put it in my narrative to have the character almost make that parallel connection, you know? She wants this guy to be with her on a certain level, and that guy's not right for her because he's not really interested in the relationship 
relationship that she wants, but pretty much in the exact same way that the main character likes this girl, but he also can't be right for her because she's not really interested in the relationship that he wants. Uh, but instead of actually internalizing that lesson, he still falls into the, but at least I was a nice guy thing though, right? Oh, hell yeah. Can't have the asshole actually learn his lesson, right? That's no fun. But his was different. She had someone nice to fall back on, and I didn't. And that's how it always ends. Because I'm just a really good friend. Oh my god. Well, couldn't someone see that as ultimately validating his perspective by ending on the woe is me pity party thing? I, oh, yeah, no, I, maybe that's a good point. Maybe the song works a little better in context of the rest of the album, uh, where when you get to the end, you know, the character metaphorically throws himself into the river, or maybe he literally does because art, and it ends with the final chorus that's cold him for doing what he did. You never knew if it was because of you. Well, now you know. ends with the narrative coming down on the character for cutting people off like that because you know look man i may not know what does make people like you but when you let the rejection from people you weren't meant to be with anyway affect you so much it makes you a callous person well that would only become like a self-fulfilling prophecy that makes you into the person that people shouldn't want to be with down the line anyways right well i don't buy it but whatever it's your music hey look i only had so much time to craft a but so cohesive narrative with songs yeah we'll plan your scheduling better next time uh, anyways hey, overall well, i give this like a three out of five the production, though a bit rough around the edges, has an unpolished spikiness to it that I could see being appealing to some people and how it's trying to emulate that explosion of complicated feelings when you're young and trying to get through a crush that doesn't feel the same way about you, but the mix just ultimately feels cluttered. And lyrically, I'll give it a few points for earnestness, but it's still some pretentious art school rap shit, and I think the overriding of parts contributes to the muddling of the message, because, like, that part, the, the, we're both on a similar mission, like, just say we're both doing the same thing, you know, stuff like that. And it's not even that you can't use big words, but, but they have to sound natural in the flow of how someone would actually talk so it doesn't sound forced for its own sake. And while it tries to tackle that bitterness that can come up from repeated rejection, I think the execution could have used more focus in its intention. It starts with trying to explore those feelings without diving into misogyny, but I feel like the clarity of the message can easily get lost in translation with how it ultimately comes out. If I'm being honest, it's a bit of a mixed bag. There's potential here, and I think it's a genuinely cool idea for a song, but, but it's buried underneath layers of muddled production and unclear messaging. That said, I, I do like it when art isn't necessarily perfect people always doing the right thing. I like it when it sometimes gets messy in order to explore those negative facets of the human experience. And I think it's even better when it's done with a bit of self-awareness that prompts folks to examine the biases that lead people down the roads that the character you're following in a piece of art is taken. But it's a hard tightrope to walk and not every time does everything stick to the landing, but eh, in my opinion, I think he did about as well as he could have done with the tools, time, and knowledge he had by about 21. And hey, even if it doesn't always come out perfect, when you really want to get your art out there, sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches, even if those punches are self-inflicted. Yeah. Hey, a uh, younger version of you again. Just, just a quick question. Since you're like future me, and I, uh, you know, still don't have the answer about what to do about liking girls and talking to them. Could, could you maybe give me some practical advice? <sighs> Okay, okay, here's the high school level Sesame Street lesson for the YouTube video essay wrap up. Look, the truth of the matter is, there's no perfect formula to get someone to like you, just like there's no perfect formula that would make you like someone if you're not already attracted to them. Now, because of the perspective of how you're experiencing all your crushes, it makes it seem like girls don't like you, but the truth is, it's not a general idea of girls that you want to date, it's someone who specifically gets you as a person. And when you find them, it'll be worth getting through all the people who weren't actually good for you, just attractive to you. And the way you get to that person or those people is to invest in the things you enjoy doing in your life, find where those things take you and along the way present yourself as friendly and as cool as possible in appearance like dressing well sure but equally in how you talk to folks and not pushing anything beyond the genuine connections you have with people and as time goes on i guarantee you the people who dig what you have to offer will come out of the woodwork and all along you'll have been keeping company with a friendly cool mofo who's driven by his passions and is only keeping company with people who are as invested in him as he is in them wow that actually feels kind of helpful uh, or you could just get really rich you know just amass a whole bunch of wealth then people will definitely say they love you oh well, that sounds kind of hard and not worth it if I'm trying to find actual love. Well, try the first thing then, all right? Uh, good talk. Anyways, I'm the Rap Critic, and... What the hell is it now? What up, 
asshole. It's old you from the future, but also the past of this video. But never mind that, because now I'm going to reveal the reason why you had to do this. Oh, wh what? Think about it, man. You just reviewed yourself, and you weren't nice about it either. It kind of hurt my feelings, but, you know, you were tough but fair. But, you know, I was calling because, well, that guy doesn't always sound like that. Hell, you give him some time and he ends up sounding a little like this. Lighting on the speed like a wave dash. Just to show you how some dope shit can make cash. And make the people put their hands up like roller coaster rides with flows that are colder than Nova Scotia's tides. The way I glide over a track like I'm frozen. This shit never ends. The division between brethren and all this spiteful dick measuring and etc. etc. and settling the bits of metal and now shh, no play around. The same sound, the guards start spraying some rounds and laying you down. And the only thing he had to do to learn the kinds of techniques that truly hold one of the musician's abilities was to spend, what, $50,000 on music school courses, was it? Plus interest. Yes, indeed. And of course, the years it took for his ADHD brain to internalize and absorb all the awareness of musical techniques and how to apply it in a way that made him way less ashamed of showing you those clips than anything he just showed you before. But if you want to improve your skills as an MC for a mere fraction of the cost, all you got to do is go to this asshole for all that practical knowledge. That's right, feature me. And I'm just the honest critic to do it. Because I make music myself, and I remember that feeling when you're starting out rapping, but you're having a hard time getting out of your own head as to how to improve your sound, or, or you feel like you're doing something wrong musically, but you don't have the language to really figure out what it is i understand those frustrations only difference is i took fifty thousand dollars worth of music courses to figure out how to parse what those issues were so help me pass the savings on to you so if you're interested the next 10 folks who hit up the link at ko-fi.com slash rap critic and donate at the hundred dollar level will be signed up for the private rap critic Masterclass, and you'll get access to a three level course the first level you paid for where you send me one or two of your songs and I'll give you written notes on where the problem areas are. Giving evil grunts, killing people cunts, nothing but anger, everyone's in danger. Don't be giving me lipo, cause I'm already first to rock the boat like a hippo. Huffing deep grunts, nothing weak cunts, when I feel nothing but anger, everyone's in danger. And don't be giving me no lipo, I'll charge at your shit and rock your boat like a hippo. The second $150 level was where I'll do a personalized video going over ways to improve your techniques as an MC, and the third $250 level is where I'll set up a video call so we can go over in real time tips and tricks to get your lyrical flow in the best place it can be. Cause look, I've seen like teach you how to rap master classes before and most of them are just like creative writing things where it's just kind of like letting you write and think about stuff, but it's not actually like giving you real concrete formulas and ideas that can help you improve and think about your flow and rhymes in a more dynamic way. So send me your stuff to critique and pull apart, or send me a request for a mainstream rap song, or send me another master artisan request. I don't care, I'll do it again. And you wanna know why? Because I like the criticism. <laughs> I like the honesty which makes man strive for improvement, uh, and most of all, I like that my music has impressed upon people's brains as other people's music has impressed upon mine! I like this world! <laughs> Anyways, till next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but... But my average shit is still better than 95% of your mainstream shit anyways. Yeah, I fucking said it. Come at me, bro.